Thank you for joining this Wellington 18 minute short within which I'll be shedding some light on the slightly confusing topic of licensing in the context of Microsoft Project for the Web. So I'm Baz Kinder, the Commercial Director of Wellington, and I've been involved in Microsoft PPM and PMOs now for just over 10 years. And again, this session focuses on a very commonly asked question, which is, well, what licenses are needed for Microsoft Project for the Web? Well, by the end of this session, you should hopefully have a solid grasp around what's needed. And if you still do have some questions, my contact details are going to be coming up at the end. So please do get in touch. Before we get started, a quick overview of who we are. Well, we are Wellington and our promise to you is that by taking up our services, your project and portfolio management capability will be improved and that is a money back guarantee. And we've been around since 2001 and we've got offices in the UK, Ireland, Spain and India. And as you can see, we've managed to collect quite a few accreditations over the last 20 or so years. And in particular, we're a Microsoft Gold certified partner with the project and portfolio management specialization. And we offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, technology and training the focus being on helping our customers to improve their PPM capability. And you can read more at wellington.co.uk, so please do follow that link and have a look through the website. And just before I move on to discuss Microsoft Project Licensing, here's a small selection of our customers, quite a diverse mix of organizations, as you can see. The one thing that they all have in common is that they all have PMOs and they all manage projects. So there is some commonality and there's a large number of case studies available on the website. So again, do follow that link and take a look. Right then, so let's get on with answering the main question, which is, well, what licenses do we need for Project for the Web? And just before I answer that question, I'll break down the high level components that are required, especially if you're looking to use the solution to power, for example, your PMO. And one of the things that will become apparent is that with the Microsoft offering, you're not buying a single solution. So it's not just the case of going out and buying a single license. This is very much, in Microsoft's own words, a platform play. And some of the apps that I'll be covering, you might already have within your Office 365 tenant. So it's worth looking into that. So let's get into this. And first up, we've got Project for the Web itself. And this is the task scheduling engine within which you'll do all of your day-to-day -day activity planning. Then we have the wider Microsoft Power Platform, which we use to extend the solution so that it becomes enterprise ready. Within the Power Platform itself, there's Power Apps, which you can see displayed on the screen at the moment. And this is the app building solution, which is what we've used to develop our Accelerator Plus PPM solution. We also then have Power Automate, the workflow app, which we use to build governance frameworks and stage gates to support your project life cycles. And lastly, there's Power BI, which provides the primary dashboards and reports. And as I said before, a lot of organizations already have got access to the Power Platform within Office 365. So do check with a relevant person or team within your organization. But let's break this down further so that you get a better understanding of what the Power Platform adds to Project for the Web. So out of the box, if you were simply to switch on Project for the Web, you essentially get the green elements which are displayed at the moment. And these elements give you the core capabilities of being able to create projects and add tasks. And although there's some additional capability, the essence of Project for the Web is really to provide you with a scheduling engine. And now the purple, blue and yellow elements, it looks a bit like a parrot, doesn't it? But uh, those elements represent what you can get through a linked Power App, such as the Accelerator Plus that's built using the Microsoft Power Platform. And in a nutshell, you're getting a solution that's really designed to power PMOs and wider project teams through the enterprise features that they typically need. So for example, having the ability to define goals and OKRs, getting access to live portfolio views, governance frameworks, raid logs, and much more beyond that. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's take a quick look at how this looks in real life. So I've got some screenshots ready to go. And the very first thing that you see is Project for the Web entirely by itself. 
So this, again, to reiterate, is the scheduling engine. But if we layer on top of this the Power App components or the Power Automate components uh, together, we get the Accelerator Plus, and that's what you're seeing displayed at the moment. And you can see that there's quite an extensive menu there on the left-hand side. In this example, we've actually drilled down into a project, the Caro Health Assessment Tool project, and beneath it, you see the Power Automate uh, lifecycle. That's the stage gate process of that project going to follow. And you see various forms, but lots of sub options there as well. So we've got summary, business case, financials. Importantly, within that, you can also see tasks. You'll see that it is a schedule, a project for the web schedule embedded within the Accelerator Plus. And the final piece of this jigsaw is really Power BI, which gives you access to one of these live dashboards and reports. That there, for example, is the standard reporting suite that we provide with the Accelerator Plus. But now let's break this down a bit further and look at some indicative pricing for the individual components. So to clarify, users that need to use Project for the Web alongside an extended Power App, such as the Accelerator Plus, they would require a relevant project plan, which I'll discuss further on the next slide, alongside a Power Apps license and for reporting purposes, a Power BI plan. Now, your exact circumstances would really determine which specific tier of license you need, but when it comes to Power Apps and Power BI, you can easily get away with the cheaper variants. And again, the good news is that most enterprise organizations will probably already have access to the Power Platform and maybe even Project, so it's worth having a chat with someone in IT to find out what the licensing situation is. And if you already have the licenses, it's just a case of getting the solution set up and configured, which is something that we can actually help you with. And uh, you'll notice that I've not specifically mentioned Power Automate licensing, and that's because it's seeded within Project and available to use within the context of the application. So that's one less license for you to think about. And the final thing I'll point out on this slide are the costings that I've provided. These are based on the open agreement pricing as listed on the Microsoft website but pricing will very much be uh, dependent upon a number of factors really, such as whether or not you've got an enterprise agreement in place, or maybe you belong to a public sector organization, in which case, in fact, in both scenarios, you will probably get discounted pricing. So do sync up with your licensing provider and get accurate prices if you need to, unless you've already got uh, the solutions in place, but you will probably find that it is cheaper than what I've displayed there. But let's get back to the three different project plans that are available. So that's plan one, three, and five. Taking a step back, I would say from experience that the majority of users will either have a plan one or a plan three. And at this stage, there's probably not really much reason to go for a plan five. And that's because it doesn't really offer anything significant over and above plan three. So to summarize, plan one, very much geared towards light users that need to be able to delve into the schedule and complete basic planning. Whilst plan three, I would say, is targeted at project managers and other power users that want to, for example, view the critical path. They might want to create advanced dependencies beyond the simple finish to start link that you get with plan one. And they might also want to fine tune resource assignments whereby they can specify at a granular level when certain tasks should be worked on. There's of course more to it, but I've highlighted a few of the differences on the slide, and you can also access the full breakdown by either scanning that QR code or by following the shortened link, which will take you directly to the Microsoft Project for the Web Service description page, where you can see feature availability by project plan broken down into much, much more detail. And to provide a bit more context around this topic, uh, of course, the more detail, the better around licensing. So what kind of licenses do different user types need? So here I've outlined some high level recommendations in this table. Now user type and of course individual requirements, they are going to vary from team to team, from organization to organization, but this should nevertheless provide you with some direction on what licenses are required by role. And as I said before, you might find that you've already got access to some of the apps through your Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. So again, go and check with whoever manages your licensing. One thing that's not explicitly stated on the slide is guest user access, but they'd also be subject to the same licensing requirements. So do bear that in mind when you're planning on working with external stakeholders where they will need the ability to come in and edit items. 
And at this stage, you might be thinking, well, I've got users that simply want to be able to see the plans or update their assigned work. And on this front, the good news is that anyone with one of the stated Office 365 plans can get read-only access. Beyond this, users that have got E3 or E5 Office 365 plans can also provide updates against their assigned tasks. And there are more developments coming in this area. So do you stay tuned to the roadmap? But this, I would say, in particular, is great for organizations where you might have a very small pool of power users, but lots of team members that basically need to see what work they've been assigned and they need to be able to report back progress against those items as well. And they can do this now without the need to get a project license, which for many of our clients, in fact, for everyone, makes this a really cost effective option. So that does now conclude our tour of Microsoft Project Licensing, but I will provide a very quick overview of the benefits you get by pairing Project for the Web with our Accelerator Plus Power App, which I've already covered to some extent. But the first benefit really is that it transforms Project for the Web from being a simple scheduling engine into a solution that's really PMO and enterprise ready and uh, ready to take on any project of any size. Secondly, the Accelerator Plus is a starting point. And for some organizations, I would say it will probably give them everything that they need on day one, but it can be customized and it can be extended to suit your ways of working. The other benefit is that it's deployed inside of your Office 365 tenant. So it makes it much simpler for users to access, but from an IT perspective, it's also better from a security standpoint. And the reason for that is that you only need to think about one cloud and that is the Microsoft Cloud. And importantly, the Accelerator Plus works with native Microsoft licensing. Of course, that's what we've been discussing. So the Accelerator Plus only needs the licensing that I've talked about so far, and there's absolutely no need to go outside of your standard Microsoft agreement, get third-party licensing. It's all standard Microsoft licensing, which again, really simplifies things. And if you want a demo of the Accelerator Plus and you'd like to see what it looks like, you will find a link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not, you can easily find our YouTube channel by uh, following the link that's displayed in the final box on the screen. But guys, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, please do get in touch, say hello, come back to me with any remaining questions that might be lingering on. My email address is baz.kinder at wellington.co.uk. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I would do a search for the name or you scan that QR code. And when you are on LinkedIn, do give Wellington a follow. We share a ton of content, uh, both on LinkedIn and of course on YouTube, which you can find at youtube.com forward slash Wellington PPM. But guys, thank you again for your time today. I hope you found it beneficial.